Well, uh, welcome uh, to this uh, new webinar uh, from, from Diligence, um, Reducing Complexity, Next Generation Entity Management. Uh, in this webinar, um, as the complexity of environments continues to expand, enterprises must have systems in place to identify and really manage uh, their entities to deliver maximum productivity across their enterprises. Entity data can be at rest, it can be in motion, and it can also be in a state of change. Deploying entity management solutions enables businesses to reduce potential risks and also associated costs with entities, but also deliver an essential process component to deliver entities that are needed across a business landscape. Shifting entity management to hosted services frees the entity data to a collated and analyzed at a point where it was given. Once in place, the entity management system allows resources to be redirected, freeing the business to innovate at speed. And the support of external stakeholders can't be under overestimated as an entity management scenario can be a significant drain on resources if not managed correctly. And reporting and compliance also become complex. Entity management can also become a critical business service. Rationalizing entity management is a proven, not just as a cost saver, but also enhances the business ability to utilize data. When a clear lineage can be obtained, analysts and reporting efficiently is created. Operational efficiency follows and entities become a, a, a resource and not a, uh, an issue for, for businesses. In this webinar, um, we'll be speaking to, uh, to two people. Um, the, the first is uh, Valentin Chatelier, the Deputy Company Secretary at Stolter Nielsen. Welcome, Valentin. Afternoon. Well, thanks for joining us uh, today. Um, we uh, we really wanted to to get your perspective on on entity management and what that means, uh, you know, really for your business, um, particularly. Uh, I think as you're using uh, you know, diligent tools, and uh, and it's it's something that we we really want to get your view on. Uh, so uh, thanks for thanks for joining us, uh, you know, this uh, this afternoon. My pleasure. Uh, the second uh, speaker is uh, Hayo Janssen, the regional vice president of Western Europe for Diligent. Welcome, Hayo. Thank you very much, David, and uh, hi to everybody. Well, again, thanks for, for joining us today. Um, I think it's uh, I think our subject today is it, it's it's certainly precedent. I think for a lot of businesses, a lot of businesses are struggling with with certainly this uh, the, these uh, these issues. Um, before we move on, um, it will be good to get some background. Uh, so I kind of come to you first, uh, uh, Valentine. Um, what, what's your background? Uh, we obviously we uh, we know that you're the uh, deputy company secretary uh, for the for the company. Um, but what what's uh, what's what's your background that maybe brought you to uh, you know to to Stolt Nielsen uh, uh, today? Um, so I my background is uh, well I'm I'm a qualified governance professional in the okay. UK, um, and I worked in quite a variety of industries actually, which is really helpful to mm. me now because I can really draw from you know a variety of best practices in governance Absolutely. I worked in um, the shipping industry before yep. um, and for a software group um, 3100 in, in London and a, mm -hmm. um, a bank as well um, and a, a New York listed business so uh, you know quite a <laughs> Absolutely, broad, that, broad that's ranging. a really <laughs> wide range. Absolutely, from uh, shipping to banking. Wow, uh, that's yeah. uh, that's I'm a really wide. Back in shipping, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You, you like boats, which is which is good. Um, but that's interesting because a lot of those industries clearly have an entity uh, there, and a challenge which uh, which needs resolving. Now, um, hi, um, welcome again to to uh, to this uh, to this webinar. Um, you're the vice president of Western Europe. Um, what brought you to uh, to diligence? What's uh, what's your sort of background in a nutshell? I have a background in technology and uh, SaaS software, which obviously uh, Dillinger is a company where I were a SaaS uh, software provider and uh, have a broad range of experience across uh, uh, EMEA and, and globally as well in commercial roles uh, across various industries. Um, and in, in my role at Dillinger, I obviously uh, speak to a lot of uh, uh, prospective customers and existing mm -hmm. customers that use uh, entity management, but also other parts of our uh, GRC solutions. And just some background maybe, because uh, this uh, today we're talking specifically about entity management, mm -hmm. um, but uh, Diligent is a global provider of uh, governance, risk, and compliance uh, solutions. That's a very broad range. 
but to give you an idea, we operate globally. Uh, you see the, a, a few of the facts on the right-hand side of the screen. Mm -hmm. We have more than a million day-to-day uh, -day users, which are quite often board members uh, within companies, so at a, a high level within a company, and also in legal and entity management, like is the case with entity management. And uh, yeah, we, we provide uh, government risk compliance and audit and a very hot topic at the moment, obviously, is ESG. And we also have a, um, yep. a full solution, uh, software solution uh, offering uh, in the ESG space. Um, I could give you a quick overview in the next slide, um, yep. the, the platform that we have. Um, so, so it's like I said, at the board and C-suite, uh, which yep. is where the board and governance solutions are. And that's also where entity management is. But you can see yep. in the middle of the screen, risk, uh, compliance, ethics, and analytics. Uh, so that's more in the risk and third risk uh, management uh, of companies, which is also obviously key. And then on the right-hand side is ESG. Uh, and it's all brought together by uh, analytics and robotics and uh, uh, can, can fully function together. But we're only today discussing one part of that, which is uh, in the boards and governance uh, part of the solution and is entity management. Absolutely, um, but I do think it's important. I think that slide is um, it's quite telling, isn't it? Because we're talking about entity management today, but it, it is a component um, and it, it is within a context of compliance. It is within a context of governance. Uh, you know, those three things, of very close bedfellows and i think it's important to i think realize that that uh, yeah, entity management is something we're talking about today but it's a component and um i think you have to think of it maybe holistically across your business and that slide i think was very uh you know very telling that uh, this is one component of quite a wide um number of issues which are integrated together and that's the i think that's the important thing yeah. now i'd like to kick us off um i guess with with really a, a top level question, I guess, most people are asking themselves, um, we're talking about entity management. Um, but if I can come to say to you uh, uh, first, uh, uh, Valentin, um, I looked at entity management, I guess, from, from my point of view, and I asked myself, um, what is it? What, why, why should I be uh, you know, concerned about it? Um, why, why is entity management um, a, a process my business should be paying attention to? Um, so from your perspective, um, Really, what what is what is what's your sort of response to that? When a business say says, "Why do I need entity management? What, what's it for? Why why is it important to to, to my my company?" Um, what's what's your initial response to that? Sure, um, that's actually a question I have to answer quite a lot. So, <laughs> absolutely, um, yeah. I think it's really about um, facilitating decision decision making and just managing risks um, because. Very often when we when we talk about governance, when we talk about um, entity management, the, the focus uh, sort of, well, to date has been on the parent company of the group yep. um, and not so much on the subsidiaries. And of course, the, the, sort of the, the larger the group, um, the more entities you have incorporated in, in, uh, in a large number of jurisdictions, the more complex it really becomes to mm. Uh, manage those entities and what I think people tend to forget um, because again the focus is always on the parent company and the, the parent company mm. uh, board is that each of those entities have a separate legal personality yep. they have separate Indeed. boards of directors they have separate um, legal and regulatory regime that they have to comply with so it's very important to ensure that they are managed properly um, because it can significantly damage a, a business and and the, the wider group of um that's interesting sort of Valentine. Um, Valentine, excuse me um do you find that a lot that um there isn't enough what can we call it importance or enough weight given to entity management often it's 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 not it's not given its true value. Um, do you often Absolutely. find that that's not appreciated that it is important guys um but often it kind of isn't. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, and that's not at all sort of uh, in my current role. It's just generally in my experience um, throughout my career and, you know, talking to my peers yeah. um, and just generally in the COSEC world, entity management is wildly underappreciated and the risks 
of not having a framework yeah. to manage entities yeah, yeah. is is just uh, not have talked you, about. Have enough. you made any conclusions? Uh, um, why that is? Why maybe entity management isn't isn't front of mind as it should be? Have you have you made any conclusions that there are key reasons why maybe businesses don't pay enough attention? That's an interesting question. Um, I think. Well, first of all, it's definitely changing now, just yeah, yeah, purely yeah. because of uh, you know the the heightened regulations um, and just of the regulators' focus on on subsidiaries and disclosures and all of that. So the world is definitely changing. But I think, to me, from a practical perspective, the reason this hasn't been so much a focus to date is that um, people tend to focus on top level decision makers. Um, and obviously that those decisions should you know trickle down and and all of the subsidiaries um sure. sort of follow sure. um the directions from the parent board um but they're not as visible so they tend to be forgotten a little bit more easily than the parent is but it's improving uh that's that's the takeaway so, that yeah. it's absolutely improving Definitely. um now um i'll turn to you Hadra. uh now um i i think um what valentin has been saying is is really precedent and that issue about why has um entity management raised i guess up the agenda um I mean, from diligence point of view, obviously you see this all the time. You obviously you uh, you have tools and you look at your customer base. Um, would you agree with that? That the the perception and the I guess the value that's being attached to uh, good entity management is absolutely on the rise. Um, and also, I'd like to also get your perspective on why you think that is. Is it the geopolitical situation we're in? Um, is it all the drivers? Uh, why why do you feel that? You know, do you actually feel that? The you know the importance and the, and the value and the and the uh, the profile of entity management is absolutely rising. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. We've noticed that as well. I think you know the current uh, global uh, situation, right, or political yeah. uncertainty, uh, yeah. sort of macroeconomical or, or yeah. macro uh, level, um, and the such rapidly changing environment for the world, but also for companies, has made them realize. I think that. You know, you need to be able to adapt quickly. Um, and I think, you know, an alternative for this is in, in a lot of cases is a spreadsheet and Word and PDF documents. So uh, there's a cybersecurity risk to that. But also the moment you produce uh, a document like, like that, it's already out of date, right? Yep. And right. with an entity management system, you have live data that you can present as they change, uh, the board or any other uh, key stakeholders can get a, v a view of what the current state of the business is or uh, you know, what needs to be changed or uh, where they need to have a look at. Um, so so the, the live uh, data to be available is definitely key. Uh, increased regulation, I think, is also uh, in the context, like uh, Valentin mentioned. Um, you know, uh, also globally in the US, but also in the EU and um, in, at country level, there's increased uh, regulation. Um, there's the increased likelihood of fines if you can't um, present the right data or you yeah. don't have a file of the right data. And obviously this ensures that you have that. Um, so those, those are, I think, are two key reasons. But we've also uh, noticed, I think, uh, Valentin, you mentioned that, but uh, uh, Initially, it was uh, mainly at uh, highly regulated uh, uh, companies like yep. banks, insurance companies, etc., that would uh, switch to this kind of solution. But we've definitely seen also a change where you see it also still in enterprise, but also in yep. the smaller enterprise and even SMB, where they realize that uh, having you know manual data is very inefficient and insecure, and also could expose risk to to fines, et cetera. So uh, Absolutely. we've yes. seen all those uh, yep. sort of um, developments. One more last one, maybe. Yeah, sure. Uh, M&A activity. I mean, you, you know how rapidly changing it is, right? Six months ago, uh, IPOs were still happening at a very uh, fast pace. Uh, but that's almost, you know, definitely come to a standstill or, or certainly decreased. Um, but it proves also that because it can change so quickly a situation like that, companies need to be able to show 
what the company looks like if they will, if they want to go IPO if they, or if they want to be yeah. bought, for example. So in the M&A um, uh, context, it's also key, I think. That's another key reason. That, that That's interesting. I mean, do you find, I mean, with the sort of past pandemic development of businesses, what's, what their markets are going to be looking like in the future, what their businesses will look like through M&A or whatever, or just the evolution of their, their products and services. Um, but kind of, yeah, the, the regulatory frameworks are changing. Do you find when you're speaking to your customer base that these kinds of changes, uh, they're, they're, they're accelerating by a huge factor that you could have taken a lot longer to, to comply. You could have taken a lot longer to think about your, your, uh, your, uh, your entity management. But these, these days it has to be done at speed. Um, yeah. and this, it has to be done at speed and it has to be done accurately. And that's kind of where the tools come into their own. Yeah, correct. Now, I'd like to uh, turn back to you, actually, uh, uh, Valentin. Um, the, the kind of uh, points that uh, Hoy was just making um, mm. about the, you know, the, the situation in the world, I think, I'm not, we're not saying that we needed a, a war to, <laughs> to, to put entity management on the map, um, but it, it, I think it's just raised people's awareness, absolutely. Um, M&A is also a very interesting one. So from, from your perspective, uh, you know, Valentin, um, do you, does that factor into your day to day? Are you thinking about you know, the bigger picture of you know the world stage? Are you thinking about M and A um, when you're actually working within uh, you know the entity management services? I think probably to an extent, um, it's not always the key priority. Um, but of course, you did, these are not factors that you can ignore. And I yeah. think you know you talk about M and A, but um, I would sort of be a bit broader and talk about just generally execution of strategy yeah. um, because any any transaction, any sort of operational decisions okay. um, will be delayed or, or you will face issues if you don't cool. have accurate data that you can report on and you can yeah. rely on. Um, so of course MA is a is a big one, but really every little tiny transaction um can, you know, can even a, I don't know, a share capital increase yeah, yeah. in those subsidiary yeah. can just be derailed completely. So I think uh, it's important at, at every every level. Absolutely, yes. Uh Hodge, do, do you want to come back or uh um I, I can because I have another question I'd like to hit uh, hit Valentine with while, while I've got you here. Yeah, sure. No, no, what one thing maybe in that context I think is uh, yeah. uh efficiency as well right and, yeah, and uh, yeah. the recent shortage of staff uh you know having something like this in place that are real time uh, requires less uh, uh manual tasks uh and therefore creates efficiency but also so those people you do have can focus on the more important issues in the business rather than you know, updating a spreadsheet, for example. Um, yes, because I, I didn't know that uh, entity management was a was a sort of a job, a thing. You could be one of <laughs> you could be one of these people, uh, yeah. and, they, and there you are. There you are, you're, yeah. you're standing you're standing in front of us, which is interesting. Um, yeah, what story are, of my <laughs> life. <laughs> uh, absolutely, uh, but hey, we, we need people like you. Absolutely, yeah. and uh, it's an interesting one. Although we're not talking about uh, recruitment, that's that's not this uh, this conversation. <laughs> um, what I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, Valentin, was uh, was just that you, you've sort of talked a little bit earlier about, um, I guess, what what your sort of what what yeah what uh, what your business has to do to you know to comply and to use entity management you know, solutions to help you do that. Um, I'd be really interested to get a kind of just a, a short perspective on, I guess, how you do that. Yeah, you know, what's what's your sort of day consist of? Um, you know, you're you're using entity management tools. You're uh, that's what you're a specialist at. But I'd like to get an idea of what's what is is there a typical day for Valentine? <laughs> I wish. Uh, yeah. No, that's not true. I, I I don't wish that. It would be very boring. Um, well, first of all, entity management is a is a big part of my job, but it yeah. isn't at all the only aspect. Cosec is quite um, wide ranging in a business. There's a there's a yeah. lot of you know, um, well aspects that we have to manage Absolutely. um but entity management is a very big part mm. um and i think there isn't uh no two days are the same um for sure but i think we definitely use um diligent uh every day several times a day but just to check data yeah. um to make sure that uh well to confirm information and if a transaction is happening, um, and when I when I say transaction, I mean 
transact transaction, but also things like changing uh, board of directors of, of a subsidiary, updating addresses, yeah, yeah. Um, sort of updating any any kind of data. So we do yeah. use it absolutely every day. Um, and I think the the challenge is very much to, um, I guess, make sure that we can trust the data yeah. that is in front of us. Um, and that's absolutely is a big challenge sort of day to day. That's interesting. Um, uh, you, you use the word uh, yeah, transaction there. And of course, I'm thinking buying stuff from Amazon. You know, a, a physical, uh, you know, financial transaction. Uh, so it's interesting that you, uh, you're using uh, you know, terms and phrases in that context, and it's important to understand what that means in that context when we're talking about a transaction within entity management, what that means for, for the entities themselves. Um, that, I think it's an important one to understand, I guess, what phrase you'll be using with that and how, uh, how those, those kind of terms are defined within your world. Might not be necessarily the the right word. It may be a shortcut. Any kind of corporate change. The change. And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. What's changes. happened? What's happened in that context? And that's exactly. that's kind of where uh, that's where diligence is very good because it will track all of that. Now, um, I'll let's switch back to you, uh, uh, Hajjo. Um, what I'd like to get is um, is a perspective on, I guess, pressure points, challenges. Um, we, we're talking about entity, entity management, but um, it'd be great to get uh, you know, your take on what you feel are the current challenges. What are the color, current uh, uh, issues that businesses are facing? Um, if you could run us through, I guess, what, what you feel are, are the current challenges today, I think that would be, uh, be a great sort of uh, kickoff for the, uh, for the rest of this conversation because we can maybe sort of unpack some of those a little bit. Yeah, I think uh, we've spoken about a few already, right? But we have a Indeed. slide uh, we do. Out outlining them um, and also a solution to them. <laughs> Absolutely. But, uh, More uh, than um, solutions. Absolutely. <laughs> we're, yeah, we, 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 we want to give people a, a practical takeaway. That's, uh, yeah. yeah, you you may be uh, having issues with with, uh, with your entity management, but don't panic. The, you know, there is a, there is a solution. There's there are solution, there. ways yeah. that you can, you can resolve all those issues. Yeah, they're, 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 uh, you see them on the slide, but uh, these four sort of key uh, challenges that we see in the market and hear from customers, and also what we've discussed already a bit today, mm. but a, a lack of trust and instant access to data, right? So it's not instantly available. And uh, especially for uh, Valentin, right? We're a company with a lot of uh, entities, yeah. Um, uh, and globally, in in a lot of cases, uh, it needs to be available at any moment and any time. And also, you need to be able to trust the data. Uh, uncertainty over compliance. That's we discussed that at the beginning of uh, yeah. of the meeting. But uh, you know, increased regulations, increased fines, um, both at uh, global, um, uh, regional, and country level. Um, and uh, being able or not being able to uh, uh, to comply and submit uh, papers on time, for example. Mm -hmm. um, this also comes down to the third one, reporting uh, deficiencies. So, uh, you know, having out of date information, uh, not having the real time information, or at least not having it all at the same time, will yep. will give deficiencies in your in your reporting. And uh, we spoke about that a bit. Um, uh, just earlier about yeah. inefficiencies right so very inefficient processes which require a lot of manual labor uh, yeah. that could be automated and uh, would enable people to focus on uh, more important business issues than just uh, uh, generating data for example and on the next slide we um, uh, it? yeah the, we, we sort of and maybe we can talk about those, but the negative consequences of this, right? So you see a whole list of them, they're all red, but uh, for companies, well, I think yeah, uh, yeah. They're, they're concerned, right? They're concerned. Absolutely, yes. un Uncertainty Absolutely. around fines, reputational damage, that's a difficult one to quantify, but there's plenty of examples of there where, are. Yeah, absolutely. where reputational damage mm -hmm. has caused yeah. millions and millions of um, uh, dollars or pounds or euros of, uh, of damage to a company, efficiency or lack of efficiency, um, risk, uh, growth challenges. Uh, one of you mentioned, you know, in, in, it's not only in M&A, but also in business uh, decisions or business processes in yep. companies. 
um, it, it can slow down uh, growth challenges. And I think a bit in the context of inefficiencies, but employee churn, right? So if it's very manual processes, it will be mm -hmm. more difficult to, it's really difficult to, to uh, find the staff, but also then to give them a rewarding and, and instinct uh, task or, or, or job. And uh, if that's focused on a higher level uh, business issue, that's much uh, better to retain uh, employees than to have them do inefficient processes. Absolutely. Um, well, thanks for that, Heidi. Uh, I think yeah. that's a that's an interesting group of uh, guess issues uh, and also an interesting group of, of solutions as well. Um, I'd like to pick one, actually. Uh, what, the, in fact, the very first one, um, we, we, we use the word trust in, in the, on that slide. Um, can I come to you, uh, you know, Valentin? Uh, what, what, what? Trust is an interesting one in this context, I feel. Mm -hmm. um, because clearly, uh, from from your point of view, uh, you know you're you're using a tool, you're uh, which has a, you know, you're extracting data. Um, how important is that that you can trust that the information that you yeah. are uh, you're utilizing is is correct, it's accurate, um, uh, it has been through whatever compliance issues it needs to be, um, and it's it's fine. You can actually use that. Is 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 that sort of you know, that word trust very important for for uh, for, for your job? It's absolutely crucial. I wouldn't be able to do my job without without it. Um, and I guess to, to put it into context, um, mm. Stort Nielsen has 250 plus subsidiaries yep. um, across about 40 jurisdictions. So it's a pretty large multinational group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the sort of operational um, structure is also quite complex. So from... Um, uh, you know, group oversight perspective, yep. it is absolutely paramount that we have um, oversight over all of the the data coming out of those subsidiaries, um, because it's physically impossible to go and check yourself um, in sure. in all of those companies what, what's absolutely. going on. So, yeah. making sure that whatever is inputted on in um, on that platform uh, is well, the, the right information um, and is, is done as soon as possible so that, um, as you were mentioning earlier, Hayo, the sort of yeah. live data. Um, I don't think we can really speak about live data because there's always a human element to it. The data yeah. needs to be yeah. inputted yeah. into the platform yeah. and it needs yeah. to be checked and it needs to be, um, you know, verified. And that always takes a bit of time. But as soon as physically possible after a change has taken place mm -hmm. um it, it you know we we try to um make sure that the platform is is up to date um so that whoever is using it and that we can't control and um, anyone in the no. company can have access and just all of a sudden decide oh i need to check who the directors of that company sure. are sure. um and if we haven't um updated the information for example and they determine that oh, we need to have a contract sign or anything like this and send it to the wrong person and the whole contract is invalidated. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. we have we have a big compliance issue um, and other, uh, clearly other sh issues as well. So it's very, very important um, that we, we have systems and processes in place to ensure that the data is accurate and is maintained up to date. Super. Thanks. Thanks for that. I, 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 it's just when trust sort of sprung. Let's talk about trust because it's kind of fundamental. It's an absolute mm -hmm. foundation mm -hmm. of these things, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Um, I'll just could switch back to uh, to you, hi, 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 actually. Um, mm -hmm. I was. Um, I think there's a report, isn't it, which we uh, we do actually want to uh, to mention here uh, from uh, from Forrester, uh, which is very interesting. When they actually put a number, didn't they? On um, I, I guess. Efficiency gains, how you can reduce, um, I guess, cost, etc., with with these kinds of tools. Um, is that kind of something that is literally the second question when you're talking to a client? It's a case of, yeah, we 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 know we need a tool to do this, but what's it going to do for us? Yeah, physical, practical application, tangibly, can it reduce cost? Can it reduce time? Mm -hmm. Can it improve our accuracy? Can it give us the trust we need in the data? Um, yeah, you know, all of those things. Um, it's it's an interesting question, isn't it? And I guess when you are uh, you're answering that, um, it's a case of putting things into context, isn't it? The business you're talking to, what are you guys trying to achieve with our tool? 
Um, and this is how you can do that. But there are clearly efficiency and cost gains here, aren't there? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it comes up, uh, especially now in in uh, yeah, also uncertain time for companies, right? So mm. if we do invest, uh, what is the return on investment of uh, of a solution uh, uh, of putting a solution like this in place? And we spoke about uh, well, they're tangible in a way, but not necessarily uh, you can express them in in value or money or return on investment. Mm. Mm. Uh, but uh, more and more, it comes up. And uh, the Forrester report um, came up with a couple of uh, facts. And we have a slide uh, explaining it as well. We do. Um, uh, it's about, the, and, and that's obviously been done uh, through research by them, right? But the total economic impact. Um, and you see a lot of numbers there, but I think uh, one of the key ones probably for companies to look at is the one year payback period. Yeah. Uh, which means that if they make an investment, you know, with the efficiencies, with uh, uh, decreasing liability, etc., yeah. uh, uh, it's it's a it's, it's a wise investment to make. Um, versus yeah. staying... that's a very short payback. I think that would be uh, uh, that would be very attractive to a lot of people in the boardroom. No, I think you know the yeah. the, the uh, in some cases there's still you know a status quo where. You're using a manual process and it's working, and there's maybe a, a, a fear of making that change and, and giving it away and automating it. But I think if you if you uh, uh, look at the facts and look at the business benefits that it gives, and then the return on investment that it gives, uh, that's that's a, a, you know, a, a good uh, trade off to make. Absolutely, and, and yes. you can see it in the, in the bottom of the slide. You can see a few of the time savings, which is obviously what we've spoken about, the efficiencies. Uh, and time reduction, um, and uh, uh, you know, like I said, the return on investment. So uh, yeah, this this is a report that's uh, uh, available, and and uh, besides this slide, it gives more uh, context on how the research was done. But uh, yeah, this yep. definitely uh, gives an idea of uh, uh, the business value it could give. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, does anything on there really resonate with uh, with you, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Valentin? Uh, yeah, it's is it is it about um time reduction for you is it about efficiency is it about um literally being able to do your job faster if more efficient and more accurately that's kind of what what it's about yeah i think i would say part of it definitely um efficiency and also giving business um the comfort that whatever we report on yeah. um and whatever information we provide has been checked and has been is is accurate at the time where we report but i think the one caveat to that i would um put is that it, having a tool like diligent is uh pretty invaluable because it does give you that opportunity um and that well the, the platform where you you can um if you put in the right resources yep. uh gather all that data but i think yep. to me it's really really important to highlight that um if you just buy a tool like Diligent uh, and you don't resource it properly, yep. it's it's going to be a waste of resources. It's not going to change the life of your business because it, it still needs to be managed um, yep. and very, very carefully and very accurately. So you have to have the right people who have been trained properly, know how to use the platform. And this is where really you can reap the benefit, I think, of, of a platform like Diligent. Mm, um, but it, it still requires an enormous effort from uh, or teams of COSEX usually yep, um, yep. who can yep. you know, really um, sort of realize the value of, um, of Diligent or any any. Yeah. any Absolutely. Or... That, isn't that interesting? Um, I, I find that... That kind of a fascinating perspective because we, we we talk about technology, don't we? We talk about tools, what that's going to do for a business. We often don't talk about you know the people involved. We don't talk about the culture. We don't talk about um, is there an entity management culture within your business in in the same way that um, a lot of businesses are trying to generate a security culture within their businesses. Not just a tool, but that idea that you're aware of security or you know in this conversation you're aware of entity and data and all of that um is that often is there often a pressure point for uh, you know, for, for diligent that's trying to i guess 
explain the tool is probably the easy part, I would imagine. that you, The tool does this, but how does it do this within your business? How does it do this within the culture of your business? Will, you, will the culture of your business be acceptable to that? Will there be some pressure there, some pushback? Um, yeah. It's an interesting one. Um, have you any perspective on that, that when a tool like this is adopted, how does that work, I guess, from a, from a people point of view? Yeah, I, th I think um, that that's where we notice when we speak to our existing customers, right? Or yeah. prospective customers. Yeah, yeah. It depends on the different stakeholders that are involved in, uh, in, yeah. in adopting a tool like this. Yeah. And for us, it's key to, within an organization, talk to multiple stakeholders. Yeah. If it's a global company, also talk to stakeholders in different countries, right? Because uh, I've definitely had examples of where adoption of a tool is more likely in one country and uh, they're already doing something else or right. another process yeah, in yeah. another country. Yeah. So to also have a global perspective, if that's relevant for a company. Yeah. Um, and I think also uh, talking at different levels within the organization. Yeah. And in that way, you can see if there's a cultural match uh, or if there's, uh, you know, uh, 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 different parts of the culture that are more likely to uh, adapt this or not, um, and really get buy-in across the whole part, whole organization mm. to to implement it. Um, and that's where we've seen, I think, the most uh, um, successful implementations. Yeah. I think Valentin's yeah. case is, is is key in that, right? Um, and that it's used and uh, part of uh, their business. Yep. on a day-to-day -day basis um yeah, yeah so it, 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 it's a fascinating aspect because yeah. often yeah. we 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 only talk about these kind of things with the with a technology or technological aspect or an angle there yeah. but you can't forget the people um yeah, because exactly. ultimately that's you know these are the guys that are going to be using using the you know, using the tools um I mean, is that you is do you have any perspective on that too volunteer when i guess when you've moved from business to business yeah. um i guess the tools will change but uh, from your point of view um, have you have you seen that where a tool be used in one ge geography but not somewhere else? And there's an issue there. Um, is do you feel that you you're often, I guess, not a sole voice that uses stuff because it's fantastic and it, it will help you, um, or is it more about uh, a sort of evolution towards these tools? Um, I, th I think it's one of those, isn't it? It's it's whichever business you're in, maybe or whichever sector, that that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's 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 one of those, isn't it? It's it's where are you along the uh, the journey, perhaps? That you know, it's it's an interesting conversation. I feel. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, I think I would have a slightly different take on that because mm, okay. yeah. um, so usually Cosex and Cosex team work. Um, well, for, for HQ sort of globally. So yeah. however big yeah. the business is, um, there will be one central company secretarial team looking yeah. after the governance and compliance of the group. Sure. Um, so I haven't seen, um, and again, that may be the case, it's just not my experience, diligent being used in certain jurisdictions and not others. Um, mm -hmm. But what I have seen is uh, the group, um, any, any group using diligent, but the communication um, flow is being very different in certain jurisdictions and others. So if you have people on the ground who don't really understand the importance of reporting on the data from yeah. their particular yeah. subsidiaries, yeah. and they want, there's just not that culture, they want volunteer and they want sort of immediately come to you or update the platform or um, sort of, again, communicate on what's been going on in their subsidiaries. Um, then we come back to that trust issue because we just okay. don't know whether for that particular entity um, the, the data is up to date and, and can be maintained. So I think to yeah. me it's more a question of making sure that across a business um, there is a solid understanding of why entity management is important, mm -hmm. why you need to constantly work on communication and helping people understand that this is not a you know, we're not trying to add administrative tasks no, no, to their absolutely. day. We're sure, really sure. wanting to improve sort of 
processes, strategy, execution yeah. of, of um, strategy and all of this. So well, it's more about communicating, I think. Abso- absolutely. And in fact, I've written communication on my pad. And that's weird, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so um, back back to you, Hodge. I yeah, sure. I want to get also, a, uh, I guess, a practical idea about, I guess, implementation. Um, yeah, this is a tool uh, for, yeah, for entity management. Um, what approach either do you uh, advocate, recommend, or what approach is, I guess, best practice for for implementing this kind of tool? Uh, for businesses maybe new to this tool, they, or they're switching from another tool and uh, they want to, uh, you want to come to you guys. Um, what's what's the best practice approach from from your point? Of view? I'm very interested in an idea of how how the system, I guess, locks into an existing infrastructure, how it maybe brings in, uh, you know, the required data. Um, and what that means for a business and when they actually want to implement the tool. Yeah, so it, it varies per customer case, right? But we can adapt to uh, any type of situation. So yeah, yeah. if it's uh, a manual process at the moment, yeah. typically we implement and get the system live, but then uh, companies can start building on a new system. But it definitely is also the case that if, uh, people are switching from an existing system and then we have data transfer services and all our implementations obviously uh, come with uh, training and onboarding uh, uh, for, the, for the actual users of the system. Right? And, and what one interesting part I think is, uh, is that um, it's typically not that many uh, uh, users in, on the system. So sure. uh, a handful of administrators maybe, a lot of people that view it, but uh, editors, etc is maybe in the dozen or dozens of people if, if it's a global company. So it's not that many people. So it's key to onboard them well and train them. And depending on where they're coming from, either manual process or another system, yep. uh, a, a full data transfer, we, which we can take care of. Um, but companies can also do it themselves. That's, that's up to them. Sure, uh, sure. Or start fresh uh, uh, with a system. And may, maybe one point uh, that Valentin mentioned about... Uh, uh, you know, different uh, countries, for example, yeah. and different ways of submitting uh, papers or, or processes. Uh, that's obviously part of our ongoing investment in the platforms and uh, localizing more and more uh, to, uh, you know, emerging markets or key markets, etc. So uh, it's an right. important part to we yeah. keep developing the system on. Absolutely, because it's uh, it's one of those, isn't it? It's a case of yeah. the uh, the system evolves, doesn't it? It's a case of the system once it's in place, of course, because your uh, you know, your your entity will your entity, I guess, uh, pool of data will change. Um, but diligence is intelligent enough to be able to to manage that. It uh, it yeah. evolves as your your business need does, and of course, it can also roll out to different geographies if you need it to. Yeah. Um, that's, and, that's and, yeah. Oh, for free. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. To but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a SaaS system, right? So yeah. it's very easy to yeah. uh, upgrade and and update it like that. So uh, that's the 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 key of uh, offering a solution like this. If it's in a SaaS model, you were able to adapt and improve the system uh, uh, pretty rapidly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is there an example you could give us? Is there uh, is there any kind of case study you could uh, you could sort of help us with to put some of that into perspective? Yeah, we have uh, uh, one that we can mention here. We can also we also have a case study um, uh, about it, which is available uh, if you're interested in it. Okay. But it's uh, a company called Cisco. It's not the Cisco Systems, right? No, let's get that right. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not with a C, it's with, with an S. Yeah, S Y S C O. It's a global. Yeah, it's not that Cisco. It's another Cisco. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, it's a, a, a global uh, food services company, yeah, they, uh, and they have. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Valentin works with a lot of entities, but they, they have 300 entities, um, and uh, they file the necessary registration annual renewals yep. uh, uh, for, for all their subsidiaries globally, uh, so can so they can run their day to day business. And they can, you know, track it on a real time, and all the data is available. So it's it's an interesting uh, um, uh, business case, and uh, yeah, it's available to uh, 
uh, uh, on request, we can definitely provide it for people who are interested in how a company, maybe this is, these are companies that are similar to them, right? Um, but how that company uh, hmm. does it. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, I mean, for you, Valentin, is, uh, I mean, the, with the case study, uh, I think they're managing, um, is it 300 entities across Europe yep. and, uh, yep. and America? Um, is that typical? Is that small? Is that large? Um, um, was one when we talk about entities, I guess, uh, try to put a number on that or how large or small are they? I mean, you, you're, uh, you know, you're obviously your, your working background. How, how, have you seen, um, companies with very small numbers that need to be managed and very large numbers? I'm afraid I've only seen very large numbers. Very large numbers, <laughs> yeah. You, I suppose you would that love really, it to be really small numbers. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends on on the business, yeah. but I've only, except for one um, uh, one experience, I've only worked for listed companies yeah. with sure. large uh, multinational yeah, um, yeah. group, and I think this is where the complexities really start um, mm. to play a big role because if you have 200 subsidiaries but they're all in the UK um, it's it's much easier to manage than 250 subsidiaries Absolutely. across you know, but interesting, as we said as we said earlier um, it's uh, it's interesting that it's trickling down to, to smaller businesses mm -hmm. you know SMBs are uh, uh, realizing that they have to get involved with uh, with this kind of thing uh, whereas before maybe it wasn't even on their radar and that's an interesting mm -hmm. one as the compliance environment has changed um, as we move into different kinds of marketplaces, how are we going to do this stuff? Well, you need a tool to do that. It's interesting. It's trickling down from enterprises. Correct. Yeah, yeah that's what we said at the beginning, right? That, uh, yeah, yeah, that's our yeah. experience that uh, you see initially only at the highly regulated uh, uh, companies in the insurance and finance industry, but you know, as an enterprise, smaller enterprise, and even SMB and yeah, Valentin, you have experience with with uh, multiple hundred, right, uh, entities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we also uh, definitely also have on the other end of the scale uh, discussions with companies that have ten entities. The number yeah. of entities yeah. doesn't really matter in a way. Um, it's more about the business process that behind it, right? Because yeah. ten yeah. entities could take you as much time with an inefficient process oh, as yeah, with an inefficient yeah. process with 100 absolutely. entities. Yeah. So yeah, 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 we must must impress on uh, everyone uh, who's uh, who's joining us that um, large numbers don't mean more complexity, not necessarily. Small yeah, numbers yeah. of entities could be highly complex. Yeah. There's yeah. only a few to deal with, but it could still take you lots of resources to deal with those. So yeah. more doesn't necessarily mean it's more complex. It doesn't at all. Um, you know, fewer could be more complex. Uh, yeah. it's, it's an interest. It's an interesting one. Uh, well, uh, guys, we, we've come to the end. Unfortunately, we've okay. uh, we've go pretty much uh, come to the end of our uh, our time with uh, with this one. Um, fascinating uh, conversation i think we could have probably talked for a few months on uh, on this one uh and really dug into some of the interesting uh, aspects of what entity management is and how you apply that the people's uh, question is i think it's a fascinating one you yeah, know bring your people along with you um you know the tool needs to be uh you know people-based absolutely i think balancing can absolutely attest to that yeah that's the, the one point i would stress again and again and yeah. again and again yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, bring your people with you. Uh, education, uh, absolutely. Training, it's absolutely fundamental. Uh, if you do all of that, then uh, your entity management uh, you know, solution uh, will certainly be much easier to roll out, much easier to manage. I think that's uh, that's the, the sort of given. Uh, well, as I said, uh, we, we've uh, come to the end uh, of, uh, of this uh, this fascinating uh, uh, webinar. I'd like to to thank our guests, Hojo uh, uh, and and Valentin. Um, so I've been your host, uh, uh, David Hull, the editor in chief here at uh, at Silicon UK. Uh, to learn more about how your business can resolve many of the challenges you, you may be facing with your entity management, uh, you can visit uh, uh, Diligent at uh, diligent.com slash en hyphen gb slash entities hyphen and hyphen subsidiary hyphen management. It's goodbye from me, uh, David Hull. It's goodbye from Valentin. Goodbye, everyone. And it's goodbye from my job. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.